The Chicago Film Critics Association announces their 2019 winners. IndieWire conducted a poll amongst a bunch of film critics, and they want their say too. And, not to be outdone, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences themselves have released the shortlist for nine categories at the upcoming Oscars. Hi, my name is TJ, and welcome to the awards season wrap-up. We're doing this instead of the weekly news wrap-up, because it seems like all of the film news is about awards season right now, we're just gonna roll with that, because I actually do like talking about this kind of stuff. So if you want to see more of this kind of content, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video. I really do appreciate it when you do that. I appreciate it more when you get in the comments, so maybe you do that as well. There is a lot to talk about this week, so let's just kick it off with a question. How many films do you think are eligible for Best Picture at the Academy Awards? You might think the answer is 10, but no, no, no. Those are just the films that reach the nomination stage. How many films in total do you think are eligible for Best Picture at the Oscars? Well, you're wrong. It's 344. Yes, that's right. 344 films are eligible for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. The entire list was released by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences earlier this week, and it includes such stellar candidates as Six Underground, Greta, Hellboy, and Star Wars The Force Awakens. Wait, not The Force Awakens. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. It would be weird if it had a four-year-old Star Wars film on that list. The way that a film gets onto this list is actually fairly simple. It has to be at least 40 minutes long. It has to have been projected in either 35 millimeter, 70 millimeter, or a recognized digital format. And it must have spent one consecutive week screening in a movie theater in Los Angeles County in the 2019 calendar year. Basically, a lot of films just fall into it. They are automatically eligible for Best Picture because they happen to have been released. There are other films still that actually must pay theaters to show their films in order to get consideration. The final 10 films that actually make it into the nomination don't have to worry about this second one because they would have to have had a very good theater run in order to get into the nominations in the first place but it does lead to this funny situation where we have a lot of films that you wouldn't expect to be muttered in the same breath as Oscar getting muttered in the same breath as Oscar. So now that we've given you a little bit of trivia to start off your day, how about those Chicago film critics? They wanted to have their say ever since we started talking about the New York critics and the Los Angeles critics, and they decided that they were going to throw us a little bit of a curveball. But before that, they just decided, fastball, yo, right down the middle. They decided that Parasite was the best film of the year, and considering all the other accolades it's been getting, it's hard to argue with them. Parasite also won Best Director for Bong Joon-ho, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Foreign Language Film. The curveball from the Chicago critics came in the form of four awards for Little Women. Previously, the only reason we really had to talk about Little Women was because they were not getting awards and not really getting nominated either, but now they are. The four awards that Little Women won were Best Supporting Actress for Florence Pugh, Best Adapted Screenplay for Greta Gerwig, Best Costume Design, and Best Original Score. Other notable award winners given out by the Chicago Film Critics include Adam Driver winning Best Actor for Marriage Story, Lupita Nyong'o winning Best Actress for Us, Brad Pitt winning Best Supporting Actor for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Roger Deakins winning Best Cinematography for 1917, and Thelma Schoonmacher winning Best Editing for The Irishman. So sorry if I pronounce anyone's name wrong, it's mostly Sandra's fault. It's also interesting to note that coming into the awards, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood had the bulk of the nominations, with nine. And then it just came away with two, and I don't know if there's anything to read into that, but I do find it peculiar. I do want to get into the details a bit more with the Chicago Film Critics Association Awards, but first I think we should also go through who the IndieWire Critics Poll gave all of their awards to. IndieWire has a yearly tradition where they poll a number of film critics who might not be a part of a film critic association assigned to a city, a country, etc. And so this year they reached out to 304 film critics and got them to submit lists and picks over a number of categories. And here are the results of that poll. Your old friend Parasite won Best Picture, Best Director for Bong Joon-ho, Best Screenplay, and Best Foreign Film. Lupita Nyong'o won Best Female Actress for Us. Adam Driver won Best Actor for Marriage Story. Laura Dern won Best Supporting Actress for Marriage Story. Joe Pesci won Best Supporting Actor for The Irishman. 1917 won Best Cinematography. Apollo 11 won Best Documentary. And Atlantics won Best First Feature, which won't matter at all for its Oscar hopes, but it's still a nice award to get. 
So from the Chicago Critics Awards and the IndieWire poll and even the Los Angeles Critics Awards that we talked about last week, I think we can say that the Parasite hype is for real. We just can't ignore it as a solid contender for getting nominated, and at this point, why not just say that it's also a contender for winning the whole damn thing? We might end up with a split vote between The Irishman and Marriage Story, as those seem to be the films that are the frontrunners right now, and what better film to come right up the middle than Parasite? Maybe 1917, because everybody loves a war film, but Parasite's been out longer, and it's been getting way more accolades. It, it feels like it could happen. It's also interesting that Parasite is starting to rack up screenplay awards. This could be a way of getting Bong Joon-ho onto the ticket and give him an Oscar without actually giving him the Best Director Oscar. This has definitely happened at the Oscars before. Quentin Tarantino knows what I'm talking about. Also, it has to be said that Lapita Nyong'o has the momentum. She's coming in strong. She's going to take this award. I can feel it in my bones. If Renee Zellweger was getting the same kind of accolades, or even if they were split 50-50 between the two, I would say this is a more even race. But considering that Lupita Nyong'o got the nomination for the SAG Awards and is now just piling up the Critics Awards, I think she might be tough to beat in this category. I don't, I don't know if Renee Zellweger can do enough to win this. I, it might just happen. All of the good things might happen at the Oscars this year. Flash forward to three months from now when I do a wrap-up video on the Oscars and I'm sad. Moving on, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, Laura Dern, Adam Driver, pretty much locks. They're just gonna win. I can't see it going any other way at this point. Laura Dern especially. That's gonna be like my 100% absolute is going to win. Last year, my 100% absolute going to win was Glenn Close. That turned out real well for me. The Oscars are fun. <laughs> I also have very strong feelings about Roger Deakins doing very well this year and picking up his second Academy Award, which, considering how many times he was nominated and didn't win and was deserving to win, I'm okay with him winning a couple of years in a row. Joe Pesci picking up the Best Supporting Actor Award from the IndieWire poll also makes me think that maybe, just maybe, the underdog will win in that and he'll be able to beat Brad Pitt. But Brad Pitt also won the Chicago one and he's gotten a lot of love, and people have just been saying he's the outright frontrunner for a long time, but I really wanna push this possibility that Joe Pesci might, might just sneak in there, because I think that's just gonna make it a lot more interesting. Speaking of interesting, Apollo 11 is not making the documentary race interesting at all. It's gonna win. And before we move on to the Academy Awards shortlist, I just wanna say I'm so happy to see Little Women finally getting some award recognition. I think we haven't been seeing it in a lot of these other lists leading up till now because it is largely an ensemble piece, and it's a lot harder for individual performances to come out of that. We probably should have been seeing Greta Gerwig getting more nominations and more awards from critic circles if she had a good shot at getting a nomination for either uh, the Academy Awards or the Golden Globes, which she know that she didn't get a nomination in the Golden Globes. It sucks. It's unfortunate. I hope that she gets a nomination in the Oscars, but I am saying that as someone who hasn't seen Little Women yet, although I do have a lot of confidence in her and her directing ability, and I just have very good feelings inside of me about it. So hopefully when I finally see the film, I will be able to tell you if my feelings were right. But now we're not gonna talk about feelings anymore. We are going to get right down to the fact of the matter. We have been speculating on some things up until now. In fact, on pretty much everything up until now, I think there's some 100% slam dunks out there, but these, these give us the clearest indication of what we can be expecting in some of the categories that we haven't really touched on at all. So. Let's get into the nine categories that the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has given us their shortlist for. And when I say nine, I mean they've given us nine shortlists, but we're only gonna cover the ones where I've actually seen most of the films or know of most of the films, so if you were looking for insight into the best animated short film category in this episode of the award season wrap-up, I'm sorry, that's not what's gonna happen. That'll be, that'll be in the future, if you want it to be in the future. Comment below and like this video if you want to see me talk about all of the other categories, because there are ways of predicting them, I just have not done the research yet because it takes a lot. So as I said, there were nine categories that the Academy announced the shortlist for, and those include documentary feature, documentary short, international film, makeup and hairstyling, music original score, music original song, animated short film, live action short film, and visual effects. Each shortlist has 10 films in it, and I believe it goes as high as 15. So we're obviously not gonna be going through each one and talking about each individual film and its merits. That would take 
way too long. What I want to do is pick out the categories where I've seen a lot of the films or I know how those films are sitting in the build-up to awards season and just give you my predictions for which ones will actually be nominated. I have a pretty good feeling about all of these, so I'm just gonna stick with them all the way through unless something catastrophic happens, like Bong Joon-ho shoots a guy in the middle of a street and everyone's like, well, we can't really give Parasite an award now because Bong Joon-ho's a murderer. That's really the only way I can see these changing. So let's start off with documentary feature, whose nominations will include Apollo 11, American Factory, Honeyland, Maiden, and For Sama. Apollo 11 has won a bunch of awards and it was also the highest grossing documentary of the year. American Factory also won awards. Maiden also won an award somewhere along the way. Honeyland also won an award somewhere along the way. And for Sama was talked about in the chat of the live stream that I did last week. So I'm just gonna trust you, dear viewer, that uh, it's actually very good. And I hope you're not leading me astray because this could be really embarrassing otherwise. <laughs> I would say there's also a chance that a film like The Biggest Little Farm might get into this top five, but I also don't want it to. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's kind of not very good, but it does have the name recognition to go for it. And sometimes when we're talking about more niche categories, and yes, best documentary feature is a niche category, name recognition is all you really need to get into the final five. We then move on to best international feature, which will include Parasite, no shit. And then the films that will eventually lose to Parasite, Atlantics, Pain and Glory, Les Miserables, and I'm a little wary about picking the fifth one because it's a bit of a toss up in my mind. I know that Honeyland has been fairly well received, although I tend to think that the Oscars will put that in documentary and not in foreign language film, which then leads me to think that The Painted Bird is the most likely to get the fifth spot out of what is in the list, but it's, it's a tough call. I'm gonna say The Painted Bird, but something could easily walk into that fifth spot, but I'm gonna say The Painted Bird. We then move on to makeup and hairstyling, where once again we have Bombshell, and then all of the films that are going to lose to Bombshell. Those other films include Rocket Man, Little Women, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Joker, although I would much prefer any of the other films to be in there instead of Joker. Not to say that Joker was a bad film because of the makeup and hairstyling. I think it wasn't very good for a number of other reasons. I think that there are just other films that need to get in there. Something like 1917, I think, would be a much better fit than Joker, including Judy and Downton Abbey. I think those would make a lot more sense. But also, I think people are going to be making the case for Joker as a actual best film contender. And typically, that means that the film ends up picking up nominations in other categories where it may not necessarily deserve them. I tend to think that Joker shouldn't be nominated in this obviously, as I just said that, and I would much prefer Judy or 1917 getting in there instead. I'm not even going to touch Best Original Song and Best Original Score. I realized when looking at these that I had seen very little of the films that had actually been nominated or put on this shortlist, and also there were some films where I was like, oh, that had a score? So in the case of Marriage Story, I was like, did, did that? Was there music in Marriage Story? It just, it wasn't memorable enough for me to remember, and so I didn't want to create a list off of just things that were, that were completely blank in my mind. Not yet anyways. We're gonna do all of these nominees at one point or another, but just not right now. That is also going to be true for the documentary, live action, and animated shorts, mostly because I haven't seen them yet. The package of short films that typically comes to theaters in Toronto, TIFF, uh, hasn't been released there yet, so I haven't had a chance to see any of these. And I haven't done my research into the film festivals where they would have qualified for the Oscars, so, I would need to do all of that before becoming confident and trying to pick one out. And so doing it now would just be useless. So instead, we're gonna talk about the best visual effects category because this one has always been a sore spot for me because I never learned my lesson, but this is going to be the year. When it comes to the best visual effects category, I always assume that Oscar voters are going to go for the film with the most visual effects. So when Axe Machina won an Oscar, I was definitely picking something else. And last year, when Blade Runner 2049 won, I had absolutely picked a Marvel film. But this year, I'm not making that mistake. And it's probably going to end up biting me in the ass. So for my picks as to the five nominations, I am going with 1917, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, The Irishman, Avengers Endgame, and I guess the Lion King, because they say it's a live action film, but it isn't, 
and I'm wondering if Oscar voters are going to disqualify it in their own minds because of that. In which case, I could see another furry film taking its place. Yeah, it's Cats. Cats is definitely gonna get nominated if people don't give a shit about The Lion King in this category. Although, I mean, what's the fucking difference? I don't know how to even pick between those two in this instance, but I feel like it's going to be one of them. And then for picking who's actually going to win, I think this is going to come down to what people think is more impressive. The de-aging technology used in The Irishman versus the practical effects that would have had to have been used on 1917, especially because they were going for a very low number of cuts. They wanted the film to seem almost seamless. From what I've heard, there are a handful of cuts in the whole thing, and in a lot of cases, the cuts are being hidden, so it seems like one seamless take the whole time. We know from films like Birdman that people find that typically impressive, but I don't know if that's going to be more impressive than The Irishman. I've also talked to people who have seen The Irishman in theaters and people who have seen The Irishman on Netflix watching it at like 1080p or whatever. It seems like there's a disparity between how good people think the de-aging process actually was. I have a theory that if you're watching it in 4K in a theater, I think the de-aging actually looks better. If you're watching it at 1080p, I think it's still gonna have that more plasticky look to it because there's less pixels and there's less information being given to your eyes. If enough of the Oscar voters are just watching this on their regular old 1080p Netflix accounts, that could actually work against the Irishman in this category. So because of that, I'm just gonna give it to 1917 right now. Fingers crossed that it actually gets nominated because I feel like this category could be wide open. I've picked these five films because they have a certain amount of notoriety. They didn't bomb. They did fairly well from a box office standpoint. For that reason, I excluded films like Terminator Dark Fate and Gemini Man. Although I think there's a case for something like Gemini Man if you're just looking at it from a technical achievement standpoint but I think people will also just say, yeah, but what good is a technical achievement if no one shows up at the theater? So that is going to work against it, and once again is why I did not include it. So that is who I think is going to be nominated and who I think is going to win in those five particular Oscar categories. We're gonna be talking about all of the other categories as the shortlist get released, uh, and we're gonna be talking about who we think is gonna win when we get the final list of nominations. We're gonna be doing all of this Oscar stuff all of the time until the Oscars are over. And then it's just gonna start again because we need these views and you guys love this stuff. So we're just gonna keep doing it. And now we're at the end of the episode, so it's time for me to tell you what's coming out this weekend, but you already know it's Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, and also Cats. Don't forget about Cats, and also another movie. Oh, Bombshell. Bombshell is also coming out this weekend. It's also worth noting that when this video goes live, I will be in my seat waiting for Star Wars to actually go live, and it seems like it's kind of a polarizing film, so if you guys would be interested in a maybe live stream reaction Friday night or Saturday, let me know in the comments. I'd be open to doing that. I would enjoy talking about it, as long as we can keep the comments respectful, internet, Thank you. But please let me know what you're gonna be watching this weekend in the comments below and what you think about all of these crazy Oscar predictions that I'm making. What are your crazy Oscar predictions? Please let me know in the comments below. And so now we're done. Please subscribe to this channel, like this video, do all those things, have a great weekend, and uh, maybe don't shit post about Star Wars immediately after you see it. Give it some time and then shit post about it. Cause from what I heard, it's bad anyways but just give, give yourself a minute.